The Britain Gang, how it all started. John Bevan was a notorious runaway, or better known as a bush ranger, in the last part of the 1820s. In Van Diemen's Land, in Van Diemen's Land Tasmania, he absconded from a ch- chain gang around where Monceston now is. He was on the run with another convict, George Appleby, and between the two they held up and murdered many people. Around October 1829, Appleby was caught and Bevan joined up with Samuel Britton and Joseph Hall. And there was a £200 bounty on their heads or a pardon. Samuel Britton was five foot four, brown hair and blue eyes. He also was an escaped convict from a chain gang from around um, Norfolk Plains where well, Longford and a few other towns are today. In January 1830, a man named Joseph Hall joined them and for a month or so, th- this is the time they robbed the Archer House and also Mr Field's hut and killed a few sheep. Hall had only joined them to try and kill both of them or one of them for the reward money or a pardon. And in late February 1830, Hall got his chance. And from the Colonial Times, it was written like this. Sunday evening, when they observed a young Mr Thomas, which is Jocelyn Thomas, the sub-treasurer of North Down, and another gentleman riding towards the town, that it was agreed, and the town being Launceston, that they agreed that Britain should go up to them and if he found them unarmed, he should rob them. But if they were armed, to make a signal to that effect. Upon Britain leaving, leaving them, Bevan laid down his double barrel gun to strike a light. While doing so, Hall, who had been watching for an opportunity, placed himself between the gun and Bevan and ordered him to march before him to Waddle's Hotel, threatened to shoot him in the head if he made any resistance. Bevan, notwithstanding this, sprang to his feet and went for his gun, and Hall instantly shot him in the head on the spot. Hall received his reward money and also got him pardoned, and a few years later became a constable in the Launceston in the Launceston town a few years later. After this, Britain was on the run and kept a very low profile, and he was seen a few times but never cornered. In 1832, Britain was joined by George Jenkins and Edward Brown, and this is the start of the Britain gang. The Britain gang seemed to live around the Tamer River in the early 1833. Britain carried a A short double barrel gun, Brown and Jenkins carried a musket, which they all stole. They also carried a pistol across their breast. Reported in a paper of 28th of September 1833, most common folk in the area believed the constables would never catch the Britain gang as they only stuck to the roads of Launceston and Georgetown. Britain, when robbing Mr Thorne, laughed at the idea of being caught by the local constables and called them apple women. Do you know what apple women is? No, I don't. It's a woman with a corset. Oh, (laughs) fair enough. So he was calling them apple women. Around late 1833, they moved their marauding to the Upper Mersey and the Kimley area. And the houses they attacked, and one of the houses they attacked was Lieutenant Vaughan's house on the Mersey River. Mr Vaughan said they tied everyone up and made a clean sweep of the place, which means they took everything of value, and also said they looked exhausted. After this, there was a reward of 200 sovereigns or a free pardon. Three of the Britain gang's hideouts were found in 1834. One was by men looking for stray cattle in the Frenchman Cap area. They found a bag of sovereign coins, one one bag of $1 coins, 
and heaps of jewellery. They also found a letter on the table addressed to Samuel Britton. Another hut was found in the Westbury area by the Chief District Constable Mr Bonney. A, cons- a comfortable hut in the middle of a vegetable garden. Inside there was many trucks, trunks full of stolen items. And the last one fa- was found on Mr Thomas's property at Northdown and it was found that some of the servants were feeding them from the storehouse. At this time, the reward was a 1,000 acres for the capture of the Britain gang, Um, and at this stage they were cornered in the Mersey to Portsmouth area, and this is how they spent their last few days. So travellers, just finishing off with the Britain gang on the last few days. Uh, we've spent a whole day here at uh, Portsmouth and around Squeaky Point and the Tongue and stuff. So the Britain gang decided to go to the west side of the Mersey to allude to the police. Uh, with no supplies and unpopulated, they soon come back. Uh, they made a crude catamaran. This is uh, in the paper and turned it over as they nearly got to the other side and, and they all nearly drowned. Britain was exhausted and he stayed beside the river while Brown and Jeffkins made their way towards Port Sorrell. Jeffkins had a blanket wrapped around him while Brown had a jumper but the jumper was used as a pair of trousers so he put his legs in through the sleeves <laughs> uh, and they had animal skins for shoes. They soon smoke on Shell Island and they made their way there at low tide. Um, They met Tom Rogers living on Shell Island with a couple other lime burners. They tied them all up and spent the night. They ate their food and they took in turns keeping watch. On daybreak, they went towards what we call now Squeaky Point. They took Tom Rogers with them to carry their supplies. When they reached Squeaky Point, a party of constables caught sight of them. The end. This last part, we've got a couple of actors here. We've we've got a uh, constable. Oh no, you've, who are you, Jeffkins? Jeffkins. He's got a bush ranger of the Britain gang here, and who we got over here? Constable Chalk, isn't it? Constable Chalk over here. Just yeah. going to reenact the last little bit. Uh, Tom Rogers threw down his bags and hid in the rushes at high tide, at the high tide mark, singing out, I'm not a bush ranger. Don't shoot. The names of the constables were Smith, Buckley, and Chalk. Smith was near the bark chopper's hut when Brown shot him straight through the head on his first shot, there were bullets flying everywhere. Brown was shot in the arm and the body. Buckley, the constable, shot, was also shot in the arm at the same time. Jeffkins yelled out, Brown, get up and fight you bastard! <laughs> with no answer, with no reply from Brown. Jeffkins then called out the chalk. Way down your arm! And Chalk replied, No, I'll say it out. In the meantime, another constable, Smear, we believe, was at the rear of Jenkins' position and after a couple of shots, hit Jenkins, Jeffkins fair in the head and he died on top of a pile of bark. That's one of the slowest deaths I've ever seen. <laughs> Don't move, you're dead. Uh... Brown was taken to Georgetown Hospital and died a few days later. The medical staff then cut off Brown and Jeffkins' head <laughs> and put it in, a, in, a, in two big jars full of chlorine of lime for the people to view. How gruesome is that? Huh? Maybe we need to start bringing that sort of... 
punishment. Huh? Yeah. Hey? That's uh, very gross. I wonder what, where they are now, those heads. So what happened to Britain, you might ask? Oh, where's he gone? For the next few months, many a person tried to find him for the reward money was £200 or free pardon. But with no luck. In 1838, three years later, Britain was caught on Twofold Bay with two other escapees uh, in New South Wales. A vessel, a government vessel from Van Diemen's Land was sent across the strait to pick them up. But we cannot find any correspondence after that. Where did he go? Did what he escape happened? again? We don't know. The story will continue. All this information was extracted from Trove and James Fenton's bush life. Shell Island and Port Sorrel have many tales to tell. Arr, <laughs> your hearties. <laughs> Thanks, Linda Barker, for... Thanks, Jason. <laughs> <No worries. laughs>